everyone, it's me, Daniel, welcome to the benchmark. You can probably see my speedo. Let's try something else. Yeah, there we go. Okay, excuse my hair. Um, I'm having a Hugh Grant moment. <laughs> In fact, that's what this drive's for. I'm going to the hairdressers, how exciting. No fancy microphone today, no M3. We are in the 35D, which so many of you have been requesting. So here it is, the 35D video with me and my floppy 90s hair. Oh, hello. Oh no, that is a good song. I wish I could leave it on. <laughs> Gotta love a bit of Fleetwood Mac. And the F1 song, nonetheless. Anyway, we're in a 35D because... Because everyone's been requesting it. Um, why? <laughs> I can't understand uh, the... Why it's so popular, um, and I own one. So I'm gonna get straight into it. I'm in a village and it's got uh, parked cars everywhere. Okay, it is a fantastic car, okay, it is. Um, but there are some serious negatives as well. And having owned the car pretty much a year now, I can really, dig under its skin. I mean, I've done a lot of stuff with this car. Um, and I can't really go into the whole remap stuff. Um, so, what can I say? Hmm. If you have one of these, yes, get it remapped. Absolutely. They easily get to about 390 horsepower and about 600 foot-pound. And it's all dyno dependent. Guys, don't get hung up on dynos, okay? One car may, may make 400 horsepower on one dyno, and then 360 on another. It, it's, it all depends on how it's calibrated, your car, fuel, I mean, there's so many variables. Mostly it's the dynos. The dynos could be set up wrong, and even though dyno operators will say otherwise, it does happen. Um, so take it with a pinch of salt. Oh. Sorry, excuse me. I can't get away with any more of that, can I? <laughs> oh, what a tune! How random is that? I did not put it on, guys. It's just playing on my uh, 600 foot pound of talk. Um, it's just playing on my phone and sync to Bluetooth. Um, yeah, the negatives and positives of this car. I've been through them before when I first owned it, but let's do it again. It is a very boring car because it's very quiet. Um, and it's more like a five, five or, yeah, it's more like a five series, but it is phenomenally fast. The four wheel drive and that torque enables me to do this through country roads with confidence like no other car. It is so, so fast. Um, and there's, there's a running gag online now, the 35D is the fastest car in the world. Uh, you know what, there's some truth to that. It, it, there is some serious truth to that. In the real world, this is one of the fastest cars you can have. I, I hear opinions of people saying, oh, I drove one, it was rubbish. I, you must have had a dud. Uh, even when um, I drove a standard one, of course, this one is also standard, um, it, it was incredibly fast, and I've had incredibly fast cars. And you can see from my old videos, I've had 500 horsepower S3s. Um, I know what fast is, and this is a bloody fast car. It has no lag, and it's just got instant oomph off idle. And that torque, I mean, it actually kind of hurts. Um, it hurt me for the first few days, and then eventually you kind of get used to it. But if you're... It's like being on a roller coaster because of the, the way the torque hits. Um, 
So, if you've just bought one and you just had dinner, don't go for an enthusiastic drive on one. You may lose it. Uh, that sounds kind of stupid, but honestly, guys, that's that's what almost 600 foot pounds does to you. It's a lot of torque, and it makes it off idle, and it makes it almost flat to about three and a half, four thousand RPM. Um, and that's pretty much where peak power is. Um, despite the fact that the clock goes five and a half, if you look at the dyno and you actually drive it, when you hit about four, two, four, three, it, it, it has a flat. It doesn't raise anymore, it just kind of goes flat. Um, it, it's kind of a fake red line, to be honest with you. It does rev, yes, it does rev. It will go to five and a half thousand RPM if you want it to, but there's truly no benefits to it. Um, I think it's more of a marketing ploy, to be honest with you. Um, maybe if there was a bigger turbo on it, you could you could do it. There's probably room in it. I know there's hybrid turbos for these things. My God, they must be amazing. Um, anyway, so yeah, you wanted this video. Here I am. Now, the negatives about this car. It's really boring to drive. Um, but to be fair, all the F models are. And... I sound like some sort of Brexit campaigner. It's unfortunately it's the EU forcing these these rules, um, and manufacturers are having to try and find ways to be more economical and more environmentally friendly. And one of those things is electric steering. And if you've never driven a car with decent hydraulic steering, then you'll never know. But if like me you've been spoilt, you're going to hate it. Um, and I do hate the steering. It's good for electric steering, but owning an E46 M3, I mean, it's just, that just kills it. It kills it in every way. Oh, 600 foot pound. Yeah, the steering is numb. There is no feel. It, it does kind of suck. The power though of this car is terrific. Um, and here's a little secret. It is, in tuned form, if you take a 340i and put like a, a JB, is it JB4 they call it? And then take one of these and then tune this, this will still be faster. It'll be faster in a quarter mile and it'll be faster in the real world. Now I keep saying real world, what do I mean? I mean this. Oh, just instantaneous oomph. Doesn't matter what gear I'm in, I never need to put it in sport mode. Ever. It's just not necessary. It just goes. And the four-wheel drive system is, is really good. Um, it easily equals Audi's Quattro. Um, I'm not talking about the fake Haldex Quattro I had in my S3. I'm talking about proper Quattro. It really does have... Uh, uh, <sighs> i say it's a little bit better because the Quattro and the Audi is more front wheel biased or or should I say the engine is more in the front so you get more understeer. You get a bit less understeer in this which is nice, um, mostly to do with the engine placement I think. Um, but the system itself, the four wheel drive system works very much the same way. Um, so you do get a little bit of slip on the back thankfully if you want to. Um, you can fully disengage um, traction control do donuts. Um, I think I've done that a few times, not on video though. Uh, I, I don't know, I have a real love-hate relationship with this car. It is fantastic. It will easily do 50 miles per gallon. If I drive like a complete idiot, it's 40-ish. Um, it's very understated and that puts a lot of people off because a lot of people like the whole M thing. I, I don't. I like the fact it's understated. It's got a very small exhaust at the back. It's got minimal badging. It's it's very discreet. Um, the interior is all right, but it's just it's very soft. The suspension's very soft. Um, even with lowering springs, it's still very soft. It feels like a five series. It doesn't feel like a three series. And. Um, as long as you go into this car knowing what you're getting, getting a soft, luxurious kind of mini 5 series, you're not going to have any complaints. Um, 
if you also go into it knowing that you're going to have an ungodly amount of talk that makes the whole world feels like we pulled towards you you're not going to be disappointed but if you go into this car expecting it to be an m car or have some kind of m magic and and have a little bit of sparkle in the handling department you are going to be disappointed it has none of that that is not what this car is this car is an autobahn cruiser it's also a ballistic missile in the back roads and overtaking in the countryside which i have to do and unrestricted roads when you're stuck behind granny dearest and a renault clio nothing nothing comes close to this in the m3 i need to down change two or three gears and scream the living tits off it and everyone knows for about five miles around that you're doing it this is silent and you don't even need to change gear it just goes whoop and you're past i've done three cars in one go in this without even trying um they were all going incredibly slow behind old lady in a Renault, <laughs> ironically enough. And um, I just did them all in one go. I had a passenger in at the time and she didn't even notice because that's how smooth this car is. So this car is for you if you want a smooth, luxurious Tourer. Um, and it's been a very good contrast to the M3 for me because the M3 is a bit of a headbanger. Um, and I'm talking about the E46. It's, it's loud, it's stiff, and, um, you know, it needs to be revved. This, I'm just gently pressing the pedal, and I'm back at 60 in a blink of an eye. And to, no matter what the weather is, I could put my foot down, the four-wheel drive system will save me. It is a real-world fast car. Um, and it's economical, very economical, if you want it to be. It's a real Jekyll and Hyde, but it doesn't excite you. It will never excite you. It will never give you goosebumps. My M3 gives me goosebumps and the hairs on my arms stand up sometimes. This, this never does that. And when you park it up, you're never gonna look back at it because it just looks like everything else. Um, some people tart them up. That's not my thing. They put the quad exhausts and all the M kits no, I mean that's really not what this car is about. I mean, by all means, do it, and so a lot of people have. But this car is supposed to be the the hard man in a suit. You know, you're not. He's very unassuming. You're not supposed to know what he is. That's what this car's about. And as I say, it's been a fantastic contrast to the M3. They are Jekyll and Hyde. Um, and depending on my mood or what I have to do, this this suits perfectly. Like right now, it's very early. I've got to go get my hair cut. I'm driving through the countryside. I could have taken it. Well, I couldn't take the M3 because I'm bits at the moment. But if I did take the M3, I have ringing in one ear, um, and my bottom would be a bit sore. And when I get to my location, I'll probably be shouting and in like a very angry kind of mood. Um, whereas this, this is relaxing and calming. Um, also, because it's so fast and so quiet, you, you'll find yourself doing speeds that you shouldn't be doing by accident. And you do the opposite in the M3, you're going slower because it's so loud, you think you're going faster, which is why I kind of like that car. Um, this one, yeah, you could easily find yourself doing 110 when you think you're doing like 80 because it's so quiet and because the engine revs so low and it's got eight gears um, it's it's a license killer if you have a problem with speeding I don't recommend this car I cannot because you will get yourself into a lot of trouble you will you can't help it half of it's not your fault it's just it's just the way the car is um, get something slower um, you need to be a bit mature, um, and probably a bit more mature than I am, um, to own this. And I've been lucky that I've owned it in the middle of nowhere, where I've been able to get away with some driving. Uh, you know, there's in other parts of the country, you couldn't do that. You'd, you'd end up without a license. Um, so yeah, 
it's a weird love-hate relationship with this car. I love it for what it does. I hate it also for what it doesn't do. I feel as if they missed the mark. They could, they could have done so much more of this car. Um, but I feel maybe the marketing department just kind of axed any dreams that they had when developing it. Um, they do make about 330 horsepower, the new ones. So that's more than what they state. That's, if, in case you were curious. Um, mine made 338 um, when it had about 500 miles on the clock, which is ridiculous. But look, 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 you can hear my voice. I can have the microphone. The microphone's all the way over there, by the way. Um, and you can hear me. I bet you can. I don't need to play back the footage. I bet you can hear me clearly. Great car. This is Rye, everybody. Um, beautiful town. I used to go to school here many, many years ago. So, uh, there you go. I live near Rye. You now know this. Um, interesting enough, Paul McCartney's son used to go to school with me. You probably never heard of him because, unlike his sister, he's discreet. Anyway, so that's my feelings about this car. I do like it, but at the same time, I'm not going to miss it. When it goes, I won't be sad. Um, you've kind of missed your chance to buy one now. They were pretty much giving them away last year. Um, literally giving them away. And um, if you didn't take advantage of that, then you've missed out. Because now there's a massive tax hike. On, uh, on cars that are 40,000 pound plus, and I believe they're doing stuff with diesels as well, so. Not much you can do really, that's it. So buy an older one, can't buy a new one. And so I say, if you're in your late 30s plus, this is a good car to have. This is a good car to have. Um, get it in, a, in touring form though. Um, because I think it should, it deserves to be a Touring. That's what this car should be. If you've got the money though, get the Alpina. That is a phenomenal diesel car. Oh, I missed that. And it's a shame that someone had to ruin it for everyone. Now we can't get them anymore for YouTube. Um, that's a story that I can't tell on here. And if we ever meet, maybe I'll tell you. Um, Okay, I'm at my destination. So, yeah, great car, just a bit dull. It is very, very fast, especially when it's mapped. Um, the torque is phenomenal. What else can I say about it? It's just a very good car. It's been reliable, it's been economical. It's very unassuming. If you like to be under the radar, yep. Uh, M3, Project M3. Um, as you saw in the last video, the, uh, the, some of the panels have made their way to the painter. Um, he's only just started them today. Yeah, they, things don't move quickly around here. Um, which is a bit of a problem because in mid-February, uh, what's the date today? I think today's the 17th or 18th when I recorded this. So in a month's time, um, I've got to go to Recaro with the M3. Um, and it can't be unpainted. So, <laughs> no pressure. No pressure there at all. Um, and I don't know if I've told you guys what seats I'm getting. Put them on the screen now. They are uh, pole positions, but they're the limited edition. Only 300 are ever made. And Recaro have been very kind to allow me um, to have a pair. Um, which is pretty amazing. They're all numbered. Um, and it's 300 worldwide. Uh, you may notice there's a green kind of theme on the on the side. Uh, don't worry, I've got everything under control. Everything's color coordinated. That they're, they're going in the car. Yes, they are bucket seats. Um, you, you may not like the fact that I'm changing the seats, but I am because I absolutely hate the standard seats. And I sat in. Paul's E46 M3, which he stripped out for racing, um, and he had a set of SPGs, 
and I sat in them and I loved them. And then I sat in a GT3 in Dubai and they had fixed back seats and I loved them. And so that was it, decision was made. I just, they belong in the car, they do, they really do. The pole positions belong in the M3. And if you think carefully, the CSL came with pole positions or similar to pole positions. So um, it's not quite OEM, it's, it's what I call OEM plus, okay? It's not like I put cheap seats in it. I mean, these are proper Recaros, and I'll keep the original seats anyway, um, and try and fix them up, make them nice again. Um, so they're going in. Um, I am also have other things going in the car, which I'll get into later. Um, so right, less of it. this needs to go, guys. As you can see, I've been so busy taking care um, of... Uh, as you know, if you watch my video, uh, my mother, um, I haven't had time to get my hair done um, for the past month, so long overdue. Right, okay, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Um, check out my Instagram. I've been doing up my man cave because I've had to move. Um, it's pretty cool. I've got a, uh, a genuine <laughs> antique martini sign that I managed to find, um, which takes up an entire wall. Um, I, I've put all my uh, Air Jordans up on display for some reason. I'm a child again. Uh, and a few other little cool bits and pieces anyway. Right, check out my Instagram. I'll put the handle somewhere here. And um, yeah, thanks for watching guys. Take care. Bye bye.